So I was Donkey and Dragon's child. Party Finder, the wild, wild west of Final Fantasy XIV. Club advertisements, high in raids, scams, and Shrek raves. <laughs> Opera GX is a wonderful internet browser that offers endless customization, but it can be overwhelming, so I'm gonna walk you through it. With GX Mods, you can give your browser an entire makeover and change anything you want. Let's pick the anime mod to start with. Now let's turn on some background music, and I got some cool browser and keyboard sounds. Mods are as easy to disable as they are to install. With one easy click there, Nice. Now, if that wasn't enough customization, let me show you the animated wallpapers. There is a huge selection, but I'm very set on one of the Spirited Away ones. That looks incredible. If you like what you see, I have a download link in the description below, as well as the comment section. So you can follow hands-on. Now that that's set, we can watch some anime while we work with Opera's video pop-out feature. I can watch Yuri on Ice in a separate adjustable video frame and it follows me into other open tabs, so I don't have to mess with it. It's very fluid. This works with Crunchyroll, Funimation, you name it. You can also add TikTok into your sidebar. You just click, open, and I can watch clips from Ghibli films and maybe discover a new series. Same thing with Discord. I can open it right into my browser and communicate with business, friends, or my community. Have a great start to your weekend, everyone. You can communicate across several messengers like Facebook Messenger, Telegram, and WhatsApp simultaneously all from your sidebar. The coolest feature, in my opinion, is that you can import settings from other browsers, like bookmarks, history, cookies, all with like two clicks. I thought it would be really complicated, but it was shockingly easy. You can see all my old bookmarks here. Don't sleep on Opera GX. I have a download link below in my comments and description. Snatch it, I highly recommend. Now, back to the Shrek rave. One morning, I was perusing through the very daunting other section in Party Finder, and I came across something very interesting. The Shrek Rave. Now, understandably, Party Finder is a scary place to jump into new social spaces. You never really know what to expect unless it explicitly says, like safe for work, 18 plus, cafe, dance club, fight club, etc. That's at least the most common things you'll see. Now, Shrek Rave doesn't necessarily sound that outlandish. It's very common to see Final Fantasy XIV social venues put on events related to an IP where everyone dresses up as a character or a specific mood or theme or color. And you see that in real life and that's what these venues inspire themselves off of. So it didn't really stick out to me besides the fact that I adore Shrek, especially Shrek 2. Now what stuck out to me was the location. Outer Lenosia at the Hermit's Hovel. So what is this? Welcome to Shrek Swamp our Shrek Rave Prime location. I don't know if I've ever ventured to this part of the map before. It's so remote. There's no enemies. There's a waterfall, Shrek's house, his bath. Everything is here. Now I actually checked out this location the morning before the rave. I hadn't experienced anything, so I can't get too excited, even though I'm literally in Shrek's house. My dream? What if I'm disappointed? I have to prepare. Hey, you, you need to move. That's not, we're not. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, we're not. We need another scene. Since I knew people would be in costume, I had to prepare one myself. It luckily came to me very quickly. Back in December for the holidays in Final Fantasy XIV, I dressed up as Krampus. So I had a really easy and unfortunate way to transition into Donkey, but minus the horns. Buddy's ready. The Shrek rave is on tonight. I rolled up to Outer Lenosha well into the rave, riding on Dragon herself as Donkey. I felt like I was recreating a moment from the film, 
dragons swooping over the hills, the wind breezing through my bunny ears, yearning to get far, far away. After our long journey, we finally cleared some trees, and there it is, Shrek Swamp, and everyone is there, dancing to the beat of old 80s and 2000s music. Category is Shrek Far Far Away Realness. The Gingerbread Fimro Tonberry, Puss in Boots 1, Puss in Boots 2, Lord Lala Farquaad, Manderville Shrek, Puss in Boots 3, Donkey and Dragon, Roof Rave Fiona, Roof Rave Puss in Boots. The Three Little Pigs, More Shreks, The Ugly Stepsister, The Fairy Godmother Herself, and lastly, this mysterious hooded Dumbo. And the winner is Green Elephant. I was kind of mad that I didn't win RuPaul's Drag Race Far Far Away with my sickening last minute change from Donkey to Donkey Dragon Baby. It was rigged. That was even made up by me. So I lost my own rules. But I gotta say Lord Farquaad was my favorite because their in-name game was Lord Farquaad. I eventually got in contact with Kazia, the owner of Moon Tree FC, the creators of the event to ask a few questions, mainly because I missed the actual glam contest winner and I was really curious who won. But then I came to find out that there was no winner. What? She said, we decided it'd be better to just have a costume party instead. It was really fun to dress up and be wild. At the end of the day, everyone was just having a lot of fun. It was such a relaxed and lovely environment, a group of people dressing up as silly characters, not taking themselves too seriously, and celebrating Pride Month. What? What inspired the idea of the Shrek Rave? Our FC loved the idea and had wanted to do something fun and different during Pride Month. Shrek encompassed a pretty amazing message about loving yourself and celebrating diversity. Even as a gay myself, I wasn't consciously thinking that this was a Pride event. I just saw Shrek rave and was immediately drawn in. I was already sold. But yeah, Shrek is very gay. Just look at the musical. Yes, get it, Big Bad Wolf! Pride and Shrek have come together to make the perfect theme. Congratulations, gay Shrek fans! We did it! Now let's shift things to the event setup. Most of the dancing happened in and around the body of water. Some people gathered on top of the house, like DJs, bards, or Fiona. But one thing I noticed was the house was empty. It's obviously not a big deal. I was having a blast, but my brain was going miles thinking about how maybe there could have been a simple activity inside the house or a game or get pictures with Shrek. This is more me being selfish, I'll admit it. But again, it really didn't matter. People were having a great time with all of the activities that were already there. The menu selection itself was very charming, including items such as happily ever after, onion soup, Prince Charming Pie, and the definitely not gingerbread man. Even went above and beyond and added how it's crafted. I ended up getting the onion soup. It's fun to order fake food. I don't know what it is. It's fun to just go, I'm gonna yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Yum yum virtual yum yum. There also happened to be a Twitch stream with a DJ. They used the slash iCam feature to show folks dancing in their costumes with music playing in the background. Sometimes it would hilariously pan from the rave dancers to someone violently slaughtering in a popo up on the hill. A lot of the music selection felt mid 2000s inspired EDM music, but nothing I can showcase on this video due to copyright. So I decided to recreate the stream for you using my own footage, graphics, and YouTube license music. This was the point I started to AFK. I got up to make dinner, do laundry, clean up a little bit. By the time I got back, the stream had ended. I didn't think the rave was done until later. I was sad. It was over too soon. So I tabbed back into the game 
and I found this. This was the turning point. This is everything went up from here. Holding out for a hero, the movie version. Hallelujah. Ricky Martin. Inspiring. I am officially sold. I reconnected with the owner again to ask about future events because I want more. I want more campy Final Fantasy XIV dance parties. Kazuya said, we've decided to do a Barbie rave on July 29th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because the Barbie movie drops July 21st. I'm ready. So, yeah, that's the virtual Shrek rave. I hope you enjoy- Are Shrek raves- Real? Tonight we're at Shrek Rave. We're gonna be seeing what it's all about. Obviously I'm Shroker. So as I do, I decided to search YouTube for Shrek Rave. And I was very happy with my discovery. Of course, I'm not surprised. I knew that this existed somewhere. There is a pop-up event for every IP. Shrek Raves, Stranger Things, all of the cafes in Japan. There's so much. But there is something universal about the virtual Shrek Rave and the IRL Shrek Rave. Everyone is dressing up as fun characters to get away from reality for a few hours and express themselves. And Shrek is the ultimatum of expressing yourself. You do miss the feeling of being face to face with someone, but the feeling of just being amongst people who are letting themselves go for a moment doesn't change. Final Fantasy XIV has this ability to reflect reality, even as a fantasy universe, in its story, in its community events, and not just the good, but the bad and the ugly. I mean, we've seen it all, but Shrek Rave is good. Let's be clear. And the world is a scary place, which makes Final Fantasy XIV a scary place, whether you want to admit it or not. You may experience a mean player here or there or a weird experience at a social venue. It happens, it's happened to me. But even in all of that, open Party Finder. Hit that other tab and scroll down. You never know what you'll find. You may find what you've been searching for all along. So take the risk, jump in and Begin. Thank you to my patrons with a special shout out to Kinara, City Spacer, and M. Rollins. <laughs>